Today we're going to talk about passive house. And passive house is a German word that reflects for us in the United States the passive design movement or the idea of designing a house or a building passively to take advantage of the sun's angles and other aspects in bioclimactic design. Um, and one of the great things about passive house is it asks the fundamental question as is this. It's the middle of the night, it's three o'clock in the morning, you're freezing cold, you only have one blanket, what do you do? Do you get out of bed and do you spin the thermostat up to generate more heat in your house and burn fossil fuel and generate climate change if you believe that? Or do you get up and get one or two or three more blankets, put them tightly around you and get warmer? And I would tell you that Passive House is really the idea of more blankets, that what we want to do is eliminate the thermostat here and really look at the envelope of the building as really a tightly designed and thermally efficient blanket. It's a pretty awesome idea when you think about it. Now, Passive House is third party validated, which means that lots of experts are going to look at your project, understand the submissions that you've made, and decide whether you've met the standard. And this is really critical because we have so much greenwashing in our world right now where people say they have green buildings and they really don't. Now, Passive House is by definition a multi attribute system. However, it really is an energy system which has an extra attribute based on human comfort or thermal comfort for humans. What I like about Passive House, it's single tier, meaning you either get it or you don't. There's no way to game the system here. You're in or you're out. And same thing with the fact that it's an absolute system. You either meet the metrics or you don't. There's no relative um, uh, score that you can get here. And so, for example, uh, just looking at the, some of the aspects is you see here that the space heating demand is 15 kWh per square meter. That's kilowatt hours per square meter. Kilowatt hours have, has emerged as a standard across the world as an energy measure. And we tend to do it by square foot or square meter because lots of buildings are of different sizes. So how do you begin to create a standard that you can measure across? And here you see that the primary energy demand should not exceed 120 kWh per square meter. These are really, really ambitious uh, numbers, probably 80 to 90% better than what a typical building might get in the US. And then of course the tight construction with 0.6 air changes per hour, 50 pascals of pressure. So we're looking at tightness of construction. And finally, thermal comfort, hence the multi-attribute na nature of this is making sure that people are comfortable in the house. That's pretty much it. Those are the standards. It's really straightforward and very straightforward, again, just for emphasis. Uh, I do recommend you go to the website to get more details. I tend to look at Passive House in the context of the Green Pyramid, where we think about how are the ways that we can begin to move towards a sustainable project, typically starting with the way we think. This course, by the way, is how you begin to evolve your intention. And certainly, your behaviors. We talked about the thermostat, lighting, et cetera. We can save thousands and thousands, if not millions of kilowatt hours simply by changing our behaviors, and it's cheap to do. Passive House really begins to look at design and what we can do in the Passive House design principles, quality construction, the envelope, insulation, all of these kind of things that we pay for once and we benefit from over many, 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 many years, as opposed to, for example, efficient technologies or HVAC systems. These are great, they have to be replaced over time, but certainly we need to invest in those efficient technologies. And because this is a pyramid, finally at the top is when you invest in renewable energy. It doesn't make a lot of sense, typically, to spend a lot of money for renewable energy or what I call perpetual energy sources and put them on the roof of your building when your building is basically a sieve for temperature where heating and cooling is really inefficient. So lead rating systems, Passive House would be right there at design. Here is a great diagram from the Passive House website, which looks at the five basic principles or techniques, I should say, of how, how we do that. First one is thermal insulation, a lot of insulation. The second one is really good windows. The third one is a heating recovery system here up to the top that's actually reheating air from the inside and bringing fresh air in for the outside. Knowing that the building is going to be super airtight, for example, we really, really rely on this. And some people would say this is the Achilles heel of this system, that it relies on a mechanical system which has to be constantly driven to generate fresh air and health for inhabitants. And then finally, thermal bridge free. Temperature doesn't just move through the air, it moves through the house itself and through the construction house itself. Just looking at these briefly, and this is courtesy of the Onion Flats here in Philadelphia. A good friend of mine loaned me these slides. And here you see a thermal image of standard houses from the 1920s in Philadelphia and some new uh, passive house approved projects here in Philadelphia that, um, well, are really performing quite well from a thermal insulation point. In, in other words, no temperature is escaping these buildings. 
we think about windows and we think about glass, but also we have to think about the frames and a lot of energy is lost in the frames. How can you generate frames that can begin to stop the flow of air movement conducting through them? And how can you have really good windows that will have high U values? And by the way, in most of the world, we use U value for everything. Um, the U values here that we're looking at are really, 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 really ambitious. So these are expensive windows, um, but very high performing windows. And then I talked about ventilation heat recovery. These units are critical to the success of Passive House. What we don't want to get is sick building syndrome, where there's not enough air moving through the building. And certainly, though, we want to take advantage of the fact that the warm air can be reused, that temperature in the warm air can be reused to warm the air again. And finally, the air tightness of the building, where we have an uncontrolled leakage gaps that have to be smaller of 0.6. Um, what's happening here is the green constructors need to think very carefully about the quality of the envelope they keep. So here's a house that's leaking in every direction. You certainly would never have a fireplace in a passive house. The idea is to seal it up as tightly as possible, just like taking that blanket and putting it over your head and creating a continuous unbroken airtight barrier. That is really one of the general keys to passive house success. So we use a blower door test and other pressurized tests to verify that in fact we've done that. And finally, thermal bridging, which people underlook or overlook all the time. Every time you have a metal stud or a wood stud in your house or building, temperature is moving through that. What we're seeing here is the idea of exterior mounted insulation as a way to prevent temperature from moving through the building. Additional strategies include basic passive solar design, um, other kinds of space heating efficiencies through your, and also of course your energy efficient appliances. And heat comes out of these appliances, so we'd like to use that heat to generate passive house. Now, I like to look at passive house from an integral theory perspective, thinking about how does it perform? How do the systems work? What does it mean for our culture? And finally, how does it look and feel? This is how we can begin to use a holistic model to understand this. So certainly, Passive House is unparalleled or, or very high on the order of what, what it would mean to be a super high performance building, 80 to 90%, and certainly sets you up for net zero quite well, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then again, these are the systems that are used or the strategies or techniques that are used to generate high performance. So thermal insulation, absence of thermal bridging, which is really high quality construction, passive solar design and landscape, passive windows, um, ventilation heat recovery systems, and then finally lighting and electrical appliances that are super efficient. Those systems then lead to super high performance building. But what does that mean for our culture? Um, well, if you look at it from an ethical standpoint, a passive house is really helping to preserve energy sources into the future. And if you think that we're generating climate change through our emission of CO2, you have to love Passive House because it's reducing CO2 emissions from the energy used for these houses by 90% on average, which is tremendous. But what if it's ugly? What if we go through all this trouble and these buildings are ugly because all they do is care about performance? Well, I found a lot of really uh, good examples, I would say aesthetically, of Passive House. Here's one. Um, in Germany, I guarantee you those windows are facing south, trees on the north. Here's one that's integrating solar and solar hot water to get to net zero energy. Again, very large windows on the south. Here's one that takes it a little further with thinking about, okay, in the summer, how do you begin to shade those windows on the outside, not the inside? Just like we put the insulation on the outside of the building, we want to put our shading on the outside of the building before the temperature gets in. And here's one of the first passive house projects in uh, Paris, or I'm sorry, France. So these buildings and houses don't all have to look the same. They can have a great diversity of appearance. So um, in review of passive house, and I'm going to be showing you a case study in a minute, um, thermal insulation, key, passive house windows, key, ventilated heat recovery system, a must, avoid thermal bridging at all costs, and build the most airtight structure possible. And as, as I remember, as I said before, that the primary focus of Passive House is on energy, and it uses absolute uh, metrics and very clear metrics. So there's no gaming of the system. And in a few minutes, I'm going to come forward and show you a short case study by the Onion Flats. Thanks for watching this video.